think so after months and months of waiting, football is so nearly back for Man United. We played Jose Mourinho Spurs on Friday night. What a way to return to football, I suppose. But the big question for United fans, a lot of you have been asking me, a lot of people have been asking everywhere, what is going to be the starting eleven for United against Spurs on Friday? What formation and what starting eleven will Solskjaer choose? That's what I'm going to do in this video. I'm going to give my predicted starting eleven for the game and explain all my reasons why. Make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already subscribed to United People's TV. Or if you are a subscriber, hit the goddamn like button because football is nearly back and let's talk about that predicted start 11 for the Spurs game this Friday. Now, before we talk about the players, you've got to talk about the formation. And I think that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to use a 4-2-3-1. It's a formation we've used a lot this season prior to the break because of the coronavirus. And I think going into this game, our first game back in, what, two, three months, away at Spurs, a Mourinho side, I think Solskjaer will err slightly on the side of caution. That's why I've gone for a 4-2-3-1 with two more central midfielders rather than attacking midfielders, even though I would say the strength and the quality in this team now is in the midfield because Pogba's back fit, Fernandez is fit, Fred is fit, Matic and McTominay are both fit as well. We've, we're kind of, we have some real quality and depth there and I think we'll use different formations and different styles in different games, but for this one, I think it's going to be a 4-2-3-1. And these are the players I think will be in there. Obviously, it's going to be David De Gea in goal. Was shaky, let's be honest, if we're being polite, uh, towards this whole season. As it's progressed, it's just not what you expect from David De Gea. But hopefully that can be a thing of the past and he can refind his best, best form. Because with Dean Henderson knocking on the door, he really has to up his game. Now, at left back, I've gone for Luke Shaw, who has been impressing in the friendlies building up to this Spurs game. And I think Shaw looks quite fit. It could have been a period where I think Shaw's like Rooney, he's not a natural lean athlete. He has to work for his fitness and work for his physique. But it looks like Shaw's been doing that. And as good as Brandon Williams has been in his breakthrough season, I don't expect this is the game where we're going to see loads of breakthrough players starting. I think Solskjaer will go towards some experience where possible, and that's why I've gone Luke Shaw at left back. Now, Partnering him, I've gone for Eric Bai. Eric Bai, obviously Harry Maguire's in there, and you know why Harry Maguire's in there, because he's a dominant defender. As the season progressed, I think Maguire got better and better. He got more comfortable in his new surroundings, and he saw those sorts of runs out from defence that I was expecting to see from Maguire towards the start when his confidence began to build. But massively important for Maguire is his partner. And I don't think Victor Lindelof works as well with Maguire as I think I thought it would at the start of the season. I think the lack of physicality in Victor Lindelof's game is where Eric Bailly comes in and he's just he's got everything that I suppose Maguire doesn't and a lot of what Lindelof doesn't offer. And that physicality, that speed, his ability to recover quickly, that gives Maguire a bit of a safety net to be the player that Maguire needs to be. And I think Bailly, if he stays fit, his ceiling is much, much higher than Victor Lindelof's. He can become a far better centre-back than Victor Lindelof. And it's all down to fitness, but I'm hoping these three months have really helped Eric Bai in terms of his fitness. And if he can hold that fitness and he does a madness, I think Bai and Maguire could be a fantastic partnership. And I think we'll see that for this game. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Lindelof will be in there, but let me know what you think. And at right back, obviously, it's Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Somebody who I think has been fantastic since he arrived at United and he's only got better and I think he would have spent the last couple of months really working on honing and improving his attacking game because defensively it's very natural to him. He doesn't really have to work on that. He just knows where to be at the right time and that's why he's such a good defender. And going forward as the season progressed, he was getting better as well. So I think he's been working on that and it'll be interesting to see because I think Shaw and Wan-Bissaka will be needed for the overlaps in this game. So let's see how they get on. And moving into midfield, that's where I would say all the questions are about this game. Bruno Fernandes is fit. Paul Popper is fit. But so, so is McTominay, sorry. So is Fred. So is Matic. Who will Solskjaer choose? In midfield, I've gone for Nemanja Matic as probably the first name on the team sheet in midfield. That's not really out of personal choice, but in terms of playing a Jose Mourinho side away, who's going to know how to play it more than Nemanja Matic? Nobody. That's why he's going to be in there. He has the experience as well. And Matic, remember, 
going into the coronavirus break, he refound his form. And as a purely defensive midfielder, he really found his feet again. Now, playing in a midfield too might be slightly different to that. Let me know what you think, but I think Solskjaer's going to put Matic in there. And I think he's going to play Scott McTominay alongside him. Harsh on Fred, who I think has had a fantastic second season at United, but McTominay, again, Mourinho's prodigy, I suppose, if you want to call him, before he left as United manager, he's grown and grown and grown and to become this midfield force, both in the attacking and defensive sense, he's quite a box-to-box -box midfielder. And those two will offer a level of protection that one defensive midfielder wouldn't against a Mourinho side away from home in our first game in three months. And I want to see Bruno and Popper in the same starting eleven, And I think we'll see that plenty this season and we'll, we'll push towards it. But in the first game, I don't think Solskjaer will do that. And that's why I think Bruno Fernandes will start ahead of Paul Popper. I think we'll see both of them across the 90 minutes. I think we can do five subs now. It's a new rules in the Premier League after the return of the Premier League. I think we'll see Popper at some point in this game. But Fernandes... He just settled into United so, so well. And I cannot wait to see him in a United shirt again. He was the, the architect behind our resurgent form since January. He was the creator. He was the man making it all happen, making it all tick, making everybody around him up their game to his level. And I think that influence will continue at United. I want to see Bruno and Pogba together. I just don't think it will happen in this game. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe we'll play a 4-3-3 with one holding midfielder, allowing United to play with Bruno and Pogba in front of him, whether that be Matic or McTominay. Let me know what you think about that in the comments below. But for me, I think it's going to be Bruno starting this game and Pogba coming on as a sub at some point. Now, the front three, I still think, pretty much makes itself. Marcus Rashford out on the left. The man who is hitting the headlines right now for all the fantastic work he is doing to try and help provide free school meals over the summer. Boris Johnson's trying to reject it. There's senior conservatives on the back benches who are going against him. He's causing the right sorts of problems in Parliament that you really want to see. A player uses influence in the right way. And just my Rashford has just been brilliant throughout this whole lockdown period. And I cannot wait to see him back because this lockdown has allowed Rashford to really recover properly from that. I think it was a what was it, a stress fracture. It was, it was a back problem that he had. But this will be the first time that we'll be able to see Rashford play with Bruno Fernandes behind him. And Rashford has got speed in abundance. And if he's got someone like Bruno playing the balls into him, he's going to be making all sorts of runs. Defenders are not going to want to line up against Rashford. And certainly not with Bruno providing him with the through balls that maybe he's been slightly starved of. And he's still done so brilliantly. So to see those two together is going to be exciting as hell. And I think Dan James will start in this game. I think because our strength now lies in our midfield because Pop is fit and we've got Bruno there. I expect United to maybe adopt a more of a narrow formation quite a lot between now and the end of the season. But in this game, I think the speed on the counter-attack, Rashford and James playing really wide, stretching the Spurs defence, I think will be quite important. And that's why I put Dan James in here. And I, you have to remember what that kid's gone through, going to United, earning that great big move, and then his dad passing away and just not having his father there to see him progress so brilliantly at United. And the, the pressures of playing every week got to him, as you would expect of someone so young and under such circumstances, and at a club like United where the pressures are so intense. But Dan James, I think, will start this game. I don't think he'll be starting as much as he was prior to the coronavirus break, but for this game, we need that pace. And up front, to complete the three, it's Anthony Martial. And again, I'm excited to see how he continues his partnership with Bruno Fernandes, but now he's going to have Rashford thrown into the mix as well. They bounce off each other well. The partnership between Fernandes and Martial was working brilliantly. Then you've got Pogba to throw back into that mix as well. It's going to be exciting. There are so many reasons why I think United strangely, have benefited more than most teams because of this coronavirus outbreak in terms of how we will be now compared to how we were before. We were in great form before, but Pob is back. Rashford's back. The players have all got time to know each other that bit more, got time to know Bruno that little bit more. He's now a little bit more settled in a very uncertain circumstance, given what's going on, given, but... 
I'm hoping that these all come together and these little pieces fit together and United just hit new heights because we were on an upward trajectory before the coronavirus happened. If we can refine that momentum very quickly, we could have a very exciting end to the season. But that would be my starting 11, my predicted starting 11. The one I think Solskjaer is going to choose for the Spurs game. I think we'll see two holding midfielders. I think we'll see Pogba coming off the bench rather than starting. But I think we'll see Rashford back. And that is exciting. And Fernandez as well. Let me know who your starting 11 would be and the formation in the comments below. But United are back in only four days. It's been, what, two, three months since that game against Lask. It's been a long time and everybody's excited for it. And so am I. And with all these things that I've explained, there's plenty of reasons to be excited. Make sure you drop a like on the video. Subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. But football's back in a few days. Let's see how United get on.